Hello and welcome to the Lookout Podcast. Across this series you'll be hearing from professionals from a range of creative industries and backgrounds share information on how they've developed a successful career. In this episode you'll be hearing from Ruby Glaskin as she explains her role as a theatre producer. My name is Ruby Glaskin and I am a theatre producer. Um, So I specialise in producing shows. So my specific producing experience started with starting um, my own theatre company with Leo Skilbeck and Adam Robertson and we started a company called Milk Presents. Our remit was to make a performance that centred queer narratives and trans narratives and trans identities um, and that has stayed with us ever since and as a result of that um, a lot of the work I do as a producer is working with artists who identify as LGBTQI plus um, and work that is concerned with those narratives and identities. Really what recently I've started to think about and develop is how we can really nurture and support artists who identify as LGBTQIA+, because um, it can be challenging and it can be difficult, and especially in the last uh, few years, we've noticed as a company there's been a real shift for a demand for queer performance in more mainstream venues um, and on bigger stages, and that's been brilliant because we've you know we used to be just sort of like oh hey we're we're doing something queer over here and and you know and people weren't really that bothered but now there's a huge demand but with that brings quite a lot of um, complexities and with with queer identities it's always challenging because you are always still working within a society of which you are marginalized to some extent and so really as a producer now I really try to be mindful of that and to work with artists from our community to make sure that care is put in place and to make sure that no one feels like they have to compromise on um, themselves um, in order to make a show or to go on tour or whatever so I think that's been a real um, highlight for me to be able to sort of help do that and um, and I want to continue that and I think for anybody of any sort of marginalised identity um, looking to get into the arts like there's you know in many ways there's a long way to go in lots of different areas but there is real change happening and there are people um, who are really um, flying those flags and and making that happen. What does a producer do? So what a producer does can be many things Um, and it also changes depending on what art form you're working in. So a theatre producer can be very different from a film producer or a music producer. So what I do is everything involved with making the show happen. Um, So that can be fundraising, raising the money to put the show on. Uh, That can be writing funding applications, that can be running crowds, sourcing events, that can be doing different fundraising activities. It can also be managing ticket income and the the finances of the project. Um, I guess one thing I'd say that's really crucial for being a producer is you've got to like people. And a lot of my job is managing people, uh, bringing people together, connecting people, uh, thinking I know a brilliant lighting designer and I know a brilliant director and those people would be great to work with each other. Um, And that's the thing that I get a lot of pleasure from is just bringing people together and seeing what they make in the room. What is the biggest challenge you've faced? I would say the biggest challenge I've faced um, becoming a a full-time theatre producer is overcoming um, that time when you are working professionally as a theatre producer but you're also having to hold down other jobs that are not um, in the arts or not related to what you're doing in order to pay your rent. A lot of your skills as a producer are the kind of the people that you know and the the networks that you have. Um, It's better, I think, in the arts now, the opportunities um, to get paid when you're just starting out. But it's still really difficult to get that paid work early on. It's okay to also be doing other jobs that isn't related to the arts and that and that's fine. And actually I got quite a lot from those jobs in different ways. I learned different skills um, and in some ways it was a nice um, kind of getaway from worrying about shows all the time. So working in the arts can be incredibly fulfilling and um, really 
I find that it challenges me on a daily basis as a human being, not just kind of in my work, but I feel like um, seeing shows, working with different artists um, is constantly asking me to reevaluate my values, to think about the world around me, to engage with subject matters or people that I may not normally um, encounter or engage with and, and really helps me see the world in um, a different way. So I think for young people, it's so important to know that um, working in the arts is a valid um, career option. I think it can bring, you know, engaging with the arts brings so much to people, but working in it does does the same. And, um, and I also think like for me, like as a producer, like working in the arts it doesn't mean that you have to be good at singing and dancing or draw or anything like I really actually have very little artistic talent so discovering that being a producer was a, a valid form of working in the arts was really amazing because I could I could get all of the things that I wanted from the arts like I could have all of those experiences and work with people and see different things and be inspired but I didn't have to be necessarily generating that art myself what advice would you give to someone wanting to become a producer? So it, for anyone that was thinking about becoming a theatre producer, I would say the following sort of advice to them. My first tip would be find somebody that is already a producer and just have a chat and find out what it really is, what they like about it, what they don't like about it, um, just so you know what you're getting yourself into. Also, as a producer it's it's really helpful to know people so that means you know at least one person in terms of how you would find a producer i'd like go and see some shows and look at the free sheets and the um, programs or on their website on companies websites producers will always be listed um, usually it's their contact details that are on any website as well so pretty easy to find if you can and you're able to see as much work as possible and again like let people know that you're coming to see their show you know if you're especially if you're looking email the producer and say I'm coming to see this show that's on at the dome next week and like I'd love to say hi to you um, before or afterwards and then you know by that you then might meet somebody else and so it's just again like putting yourself out, out there and it feels a little bit awkward at first um, but I think just by reaching out to people and saying hey I'm coming to see your show or hey I saw your show you know um, just letting people know that you're doing that really helps then there's loads of different organizations I'd recommend getting in touch with if you're thinking about becoming a producer China Plate they do a course called The Optimist where they teach you loads of stuff um, around producing, like how to make a budget, how to write a production pack. In Good Company is an organisation, it's based up in the Midlands, but um, it's brilliant if you're based up there. Ray's Collective are an artist development programme for LGBTQIA plus identifying artists who will hook you up with different producers. Battersea Art Centre in London, they always they always do a lot of support. Just, just look around and make contact with people start with what where you know or what you know already so um perhaps your drama teacher if you've been studying drama at college so say hey look can you recommend anybody that i chat to do you know any directors or producers or theater companies if your drama teacher doesn't know that then again yeah look at people um that you admire reach out to them really have a go at everything first being a producer involves understanding lots of different people's jobs um, and I wish actually that I had understood more of certain people's jobs when I first started. So really understanding what goes into theatre technically, what those demands are, really understanding what directors are, are juggling, what they're managing, understanding the, the fears and the pressures on performers and what they're managing because I think when you can really understand what's going on with everyone else, then you can um, really effectively produce a production so that it gets put on. Um, and essentially it's about making sure that everybody does the job that they're employed to do. And the more you understand about all those different jobs, the more you're able to facilitate that process for, um, for everyone. And, and another thing uh, I would say is learn to say no. Because again, as a producer, as I've described, like it covers a lot of bases and people expect a lot of you. There comes a point where as a producer, you can't be responsible for everyone. And it's really important that you say, no, actually, that's not my job. Or I actually just don't have the capacity to do that. What would you look for in a producer? If I was looking to work with a producer, 
Uh, I guess I'd be looking for somebody who was good with people, a clear communicator, somebody who was able to juggle several things at once, somebody with just a real passion and commitment for the arts um, and enthusiasm and, and an excitement for what artists are making and doing. I would definitely be interested in working with a producer that's able to respect their own boundaries as well. I think there's definitely something with a producer where you can get you can get overworked and stressed. And I think as a producer, it's really important to know where your limits are and to be really clear about that. You know, working in the arts, like you don't need to have a degree for. Um, you know, obviously it's great if you do, and that can bring many benefits, but you absolutely don't need to. I found as a producer, learning on the job was the most valuable thing I could have done like I most of what I learned as a producer was just through doing um, and making mistakes and failing many times the biggest myth is that we all know what we're doing we we really don't and we just learn from um from mistakes and from doing things better and from asking what other people are doing I'm really happy to chat to anyone that's interested in going down that route um you can get my contact details from my website which is www.milkpresents.com and um, so drop me an email Thank you for listening to the final episode of the Lookout podcast. I'd like to thank everyone who took part and gave their time to this series, and as always, Jay Felix for allowing us to use his music in the background of this episode, and Propellernet in Brighton for offering up space and equipment for us to use. We hope you've learned something over the course of these episodes, and wish you all the best in your future creative careers.